So for this part of our class, I wanted to shed some interesting facts about some gods and goddesses. Again, not all because there are many, but if we are trying to invoke certain gods and goddesses, there may be certain things about them that we need to know. We will be covering Ochosi, Kali, Buddha, Thor, Lilith, St. Michael, Santisma Muerte as well. Let's start with one of my favorite ones, Thor, who is often called the God of Thunder. He was considered the great protector of all that was good as the Vikings defined it, and also the fact that if he had been mortal, the Vikings would have raised an L horn with him. Thor is very popular in Iceland, and his hammer amulet has actually been discovered in Viking graves and other Norse archaeological sites. Uh, and as well, Norsemen continue to wear these hammer amulets even after converting to Christianity. Now, the interesting part about this is that Thor's role as a hero and protecting influence has not diminished. He is uh, very popular still in our culture today. Thor was invoked at weddings, at births, and special ceremonies for these abilities to protect and sanctify. Very interesting. So if I were to, or anybody for that fact, now if your bloodline is matched up with this particular deity, that is even better. Um, with his amulet being lightning and his name uh, meaning thunder, uh, this is very good because uh, this actual weapon uh, is actually to restore make holy or bless uh, and could even uh, he could even bring some things back to life if I were to invoke this particular God I probably would have some type of ale uh, some type of sword and some type of amulet somewhere in my surroundings or on my altar the other interesting thing about this particular amulet is that sigil charms are made and it's actually a potent symbol of the witch's skills energizing and empowering the magical intents of the person that wears it. Now let's talk a little bit about the Orisha Ochosi Yoruba Santeria warrior. Not only was he a great hunter and fisherman, he's also a warrior, a magician, and a seer with shamanic powers. Interestingly enough, he is synchronized in the Catholic religion with Saint Norbert. The interesting fact about Ochosi, which I have used him, he did a lineup with me. Now, many people uh, believe that you should uh, be initiated by a high priest but I have actually uh, been able to use this particular deity because of my bloodline and Ochosi stands for justice uh, and actually he is good for helping us through courthouse problems and legal problems and if I were to invoke Ochosi I would probably have some type of chicken uh, and also some type of crossbow and arrow also possibly an anchor charm as well or some type of pendant and then of course the santeria beads as well i probably would have these somewhere near my altar or on me as well and i probably would make a petition out to him before going to court or for any legal matter so let's talk about the next uh, goddess who actually is very misunderstood. Uh, they are calling Lilith the lady flying in darkness. Um, they depict her as very demonic. Now Lilith uh, is the most demonic goddess in Jewish tradition. All right. Um, but seeing that she was created before Eve, she was Adam's first wife. Lilith means the night. Uh, but she actually embodies the emotional and spiritual aspects of darkness like terror, sensuality as well, and freedom. Uh, and actually, if I were to invoke her, I would probably have a few things. Interestingly enough, uh, she is actually 
also known as the Dark Maid. Now, in Sumerian myth, she was the descendant or the descent of Inanna. All right. So there is much more to this story that would take a little too long. But if I were to invoke Lilith, I probably would have an altar with uh, red candles, purple candles, black candles even. Um, I would also probably have some apples, uh, a couple of things, maybe some skulls. Um, but actually, she's more of a spiritual figure than anything and she stands for freedom she stands for the things that are bothering us on the inside and how to overcome that she is also connected to the maiden the mother and the crone you guys should do your homework on her and do some research there is a lot to her now many of you also know about buddha now buddha um actually stands for the awakened one all right so for those who are awake or have attained nirvana and buddhahood through their own efforts and insights without a major teacher to point out the dharma right sanskrit and you guys could do a little more um, research on buddha uh, i'm actually a buddhist as well and we are always trying to reach uh, that bodhisattva or enlightened part of ourselves with him I don't really need much except for possibly a plant uh, for you know and then even possibly like the lotus flower uh, some water and then just actual meditation or prayer that's really all I need to be able to invoke the Buddhahood with inside of me because as you guys know it's not so much about Buddha himself but what he taught and that is why he is celebrated all around the world or that is why his teachings are celebrated all around the world now another one that is highly debatable depending on where you come from i've seen people on social media get attacked uh publicly for saying that their deity or their goddess is actually santisma muerte or santa muerte i actually had a friend online uh that got attacked for using this because he is black but let's talk about why did that happen santa muerte is a death saint with a rich history that reflects the deep interplay of cultures and devotional practices in Mexico. But interestingly enough, just like with the death tarot card, which represents death and rebirth, um, she is actually the signify, she actually signifies the undying bond between the living and the dead. So altars usually consist of objects that are like offerings to welcome them and show these souls that they have not been forgotten usually with toys candies uh sweet tamales fruits and uh other things also i would say uh favorite alcoholic beverages uh even like cigarettes uh as well and then i want to say rosaries and also roses as well and sweet breads so how do i use this deity because i actually do use uh santa muerte or santisma muerte when i need to banish bad luck when i need to let go of things in my life that are no longer serve anything in my life um i have actually used the saint candle and it has actually worked and helped me just to let you know um so you know to each his own whatever you feel about it uh like i said i would not tell everybody who i pray to or not pray to usually um because people have their own their own thing about this so i would say do your research this deity will probably be best for you as well uh to help you out so do your research and let's go to the next god or goddess so let's talk about kali kali is the most misunderstood of all hindu goddesses though she often is regarded as the most powerful kali's dark and fierce form is certainly intimidating and hard to fathom unless one is willing to look with discernment behind the veil of sensational images that we find all over social media about her 
Now, the interesting thing about Kali, which most of you guys already know, is that um, about her power of time, about having the power of time, she indicates the impermanence of all things, which is why she wears a garland of skulls. Yet she is also ultimate transforming power of time, which is to take us from death to immortality. I would say the most interesting thing about Kali actually is the fact that she can help protect and destroy. You know what I'm saying? Her destruction and severing of ties as well is what the skulls actually mean. Um, some type of altar to her would probably have black candles on it uh, and possibly even one blue one as well uh skulls as well uh for you know death and also immortality and then having some type of meals or fruits or candies um as well so when i really think about kali i think most people use uh kali or uh combined or worship kali uh for the fact that she is one of the most popular deities of all time uh and if you meditate to her or build an altar to her and you have some type of issue or problem she will come and help you now it may it may be helpful to have the type of bloodlines um in order to invoke her much more easier as well last one on the list is saint michael now saint michael is also connected with uh would be a red candle also fire now for saint michael you know he really has helped me and protected me and blessed me he really is one of my spirit guides as well and i don't really have much to read to you guys on this except for one thing saint michael is definitely one of the easiest archangels to call on for help when you need assistance he will keep you safe from harm i like to use a uh, black tourmaline i like to use a red candle i like to use clear crystal quartz and simply just a prayer card praying to him is probably the most easiest way to contact him and he will come through so you guys will see that in the pendulum reading part if you haven't already passed that video think about think about the deities that correspond to you maybe they might correspond to you because of your bloodline or if they're an archangel uh, it actually doesn't matter at all what your bloodline is and some people like to mix and match it really depends on you now if you go all over social media telling people what your god or goddess is they may come and attack you just because they have their own beliefs or of who can and cannot pray to certain gods and goddesses as if they make the rules